are live, officially live at the Boca Podcast. I am your host, Nathan Holritz, CEO over at Photographer's Edit and host of this podcast. And uh, I'm excited to be here today. It happens to be a Friday today and it is beautiful outside, which just makes the day better. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to my brand new guest here in just a little bit. Just a couple of things to get us started. For those of you that are listening to the audio version after the fact, we are streaming live, as I mentioned. This is something that we push out to facebook.com slash Boca Podcast, the Boca Podcast Facebook page. We're also pushing out to YouTube, and we'll be promoting that or sharing that link uh, in the near future. But right now, facebook.com slash Boca Podcast. So if you miss the live streams, go back and watch the video. It's kind of fun, actually. The, the imp- not, not in person, but the actual kind of facial interaction, if, if you will. That's probably not even a phrase. Um, anyway, we're actually getting to see each other and have a conversation, which is fun. But then... The cool thing about the live broadcast is that you can actually ask questions, make comments, send us funny emojis if you want to. And I I really want our listeners, as we develop this live stream, to take advantage of that and uh, really engage with our guests. So come join us. If you follow us on Instagram at Boca Podcast, you can keep up to date with the next live stream. We usually do two, maybe three a week. And um, so there are more opportunities, plenty more opportunities coming up. Some great interviews. All right. One other quick note before we get started. I just want to highlight one more time something that I've been sharing with everybody. The significance of giving back. Uh, This is a conversation that I had with our friend Sean Lee not too long ago here on the podcast. And for those of you that are live streaming, I'm, I'm popping up his Uh, his graphic here from episode 464, Developing a Brand That Makes a Difference. Sean has really inspired me to to do more when it comes to giving back. He's doing incredible work with his local community in Detroit. And at the moment, the opportunity that I've seen is to give to an international organization called Charity Water. And I've got this up here on screen. I've been giving to this organization for a while. Our company has been doing the same. And um, I just want to encourage everybody, our listeners, our community to, whether it's with charitywater.org or other local or international organizations, look for opportunities to give back. It's, it's really, really important that we do that. I did today, and I told everybody I would do this before every podcast, a quick donation, 40 bucks. 40 bucks gives clean drinking water to somebody who doesn't have it. I mean, you talk about like super uh, inexpensive way to be able to make a drastic impact. So I just want to throw that out there as a means of encouraging you all to look for opportunities to give back. It doesn't even have to cost a lot of money. You can still make a difference. All right. Enough of the introduction and ramblings on. I want to today introduce our brand new guest, Carissa Wu. Carissa is here with me broadcasting live from her car. This is, I think maybe this is a new experience <laughs> for our live stream so far. Thanks for doing this with me to, and, and making it happen in the end, Carissa. Yeah, I mean, I have two kids. I just dropped them off at grandma's house um, and I look best in the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, ran in, we, we ran into a few technical issues, but uh, have overcome all of them at this point and you rocked it. And I think you're using, I, what are you actually using to prop your phone up there in your car? I mean, you got really creative. Um, it's actually just the phone holder, but it's the opposite way. So it's kind of, I have to do a little low ri- rider right now, <laughs> well, <laughs> but we made it work. <laughs> we absolutely made it work. And, um, I, I really appreciate making this happen with us today. And for those of you listening in, I'm, I'm going to actually pop this up on the screen, especially for those who are live streaming, you can actually see this, but Carissa Wu photography.com is Carissa's website. So just a little bit of context, you're going to want to go take a look at Carissa's work. You can also follow her on Instagram, a couple of different accounts, Carissa Wu Photography, and then as well, Carissa Wu uh, for her business coaching. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit as well, but we'll link to all of these in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. Carissa, I want to come back to you and kind of use this as a segue to ask you my first question, which has to do with brand position. This is something we talk a lot about on the podcast the unique value proposition, really, of your photography business in your marketplace, how would you describe that? Yeah, so it's crisp and colorful photography and cinematography for the hopeless romantic. So pretty much all my couples, I've been doing this for over a decade, but they're actually all hopeless romantic like me. Um, we're all into the rom-coms. Okay. We've been waiting for our wedding since we were like 12. We've been planning all the details. Um, a lot of my couples are actually high school sweethearts, which is really re- rare, but not rare for, for my couples. Um, so yeah, just very like head over heels in love and just can't wait for their big day. And they actually love photography. 
Okay, so I have to ask you, what's your favorite rom-com? Or if you had to maybe give the top three, what would they be? Yeah, they're kind of random, like Crazy Beautiful, Under the Tuscan Sun. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, and let's see what would the, be the third one. Um, I don't, this is kind of like probably untrue, but like The Notebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably watch it later and be like, oh, my God, like this is just a stupid well, answer. <laughs> <laughs> why, did I, why did I bring that up? Honestly, The Notebook is probably one of my favorites as well. Um, and, and I've mentioned this before on the podcast. I'm a pretty emotional guy. I, and I do kind of get into the rom-coms a little bit. Not as much as I used to, uh, but there are, there are a few of them out there that I enjoy. That, that was definitely one of them. I mean, I don't know. You can't help but buy in a little bit if you're into to love and romance to that, to that movie. Um, yes, not, and I married like my uh, a guy from high school, and we had the best like wedding of our lives. It was the best day of my life, so wow. I'm all about it. Mm -hmm. That's cool, that, and that's cool that you can say that too. How long have you been married? We got married in 2015. Okay, so six years. Yeah, six years. That's awesome. Well, Thank I, I want to keep this conversation flowing. So let's talk a little bit. Um, we, we, we talked about brand position, and by the way, again for those of you listening in, I'll pop this up on screen real quick, but. Uh, you can see here, elegant, polished, and joyful. They're on the homepage of Carissa Wu Photography.com. Southern California-based wedding photographer, crisp, timeless photography, and cinematography for the hopeless romantic. And again, we'll link to the website in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. But to keep the conversation going, talk to me a little bit about customer experience. Uh, we're going to talk about sales here in just a little bit, but it, it really customer experience starts with the sales process, and then certainly it continues as we actually work with the client, deliver final product. Is there a big idea that drives your customer service experience? Um, I think for my customer experience, I really, from the, the very start, um, from my inquiry page, I ask them, you know, what's your love story? And they write novels to me. Um, they just, I think after you get engaged, you're just literally on cloud nine and, sure. you know, they're just typing away and people say, oh, they're, they're crying as they're typing. Oh, wow. um, yeah. And you know, I get them on a call with them and I ask them really powerful questions. Like, um, I don't get into this like right away, but some powerful questions are like, what do you love most about each other? And, you know, like it really breaks down walls. Um, and I really care. I really, I'm really into like the love story. I'm hmm. such a hopeless romantic. And even when I'm like at a bar, I'm just like, what's your love story? You know? <laughs> <laughs> People are like, I don't even know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, how did you meet? Tell me everything. But it, I really genuinely care. Um, mm. So it starts with that and just a lot of like photography related questions. And, you know, after the call, I really write down like my copious notes. And um, before the engagement session, I really go over it. Um, and then, you know, I'm just like, oh, hey, how's it going? Like, I, you know, you work as an engineer, you're a fashion designer, like, how's that going? And they're like, oh, wow, she like, she has a good memory. And she cares about us. Um, stuff like that. So I feel mm -hmm. like every conversation should kind of lead into the next one. Yeah, you know, I, and it's funny that you, you bring this up, because uh, we're actually getting ready to do an interview, I think here pretty soon, uh, Jill, who produces the podcast, and I were talking about uh, this upcoming interview, we're going to be talking about client experience. And, um, and ultimately the significance of showing the client that you care. And it seems so obvious, but I think mm -hmm. it's also easy as business owners to lose sight of that fact. It's like, you know, we got to get the work done and maybe we're so distracted by all the busy work that we feel like we have to do to run our business that the idea of literally pouring a part of ourselves into the interaction with that client, it's just, it, it's too much. Um, either we don't think mm -hmm. about it or it feels too exhausting. So we only go so far with it. I love that. That's a priority to you. It's how I interact with people. I, I think I've said this on the podcast before, but literally I'm, you know, I've got my phone right here. If I send a text message and I'm going to include an emoji many times, if somebody was watching me text, <laughs> you'd see me smile with the smiling yeah. as I'm typing that, that smiling emoji. That's how I engage. It's, I'm very intentional, very, very much involved in an in interaction that's how I like to do it. And I think people feel that and it becomes yeah. that much better an experience because they're not used to people, to, to somebody on the other side of them caring that much. I, I know when I feel that from somebody, it feels good. I want to do continue to work at doing a better job of delivering that. I'd love that you make that a priority with your clients. Thank you. And I, I feel like you make your interviewees very comfortable. Like we had so many problems trying to get live right now, but I still feel, feel very comfortable. <laughs> not good. Granted. Good. Win that's, that's awesome. I'm so glad. Um, well, I, I, let's kind of segue from that though to, so we talked about customer experience, moving a little bit different direction, time management. 
this can be an overwhelming thing, just managing one business. But then when you're juggling multiple brands, which you're doing now, you've, you're not just a photographer, but you're also involved in coaching education. How are you going about managing that as well as having your know, kids and a partner? It's a lot to kind of juggle and balance. Is there, again, a big idea that drives your ability to, to find some type of space for yourself to maintain some kind of sanity amidst all the craziness? Yeah, I think, you know, a big epiphany was actually learning something from your podcast. I think they're called like the Epic Man Trips podcast. And yes. uh -huh. they really talked about like, what are your, what are you questioning your, I mean, like, what are the questions you're asking yourself or you're telling mm -hmm. yourself? Um, and it was really eye opening because I was telling myself con contract, uh, contract or contrasting um, questions. Like I want more time with my family, but also like, you know, I want this big business. Um, so I kind of, after that podcast, I decided to really focus on my coaching business um, because it gives me more time with my family. Um, but with that said, you know, I do a lot of outsourcing. I outsource my social media. I outsource um, my editing, album design, um, because it's just, it's a lot because I'm actually shooting a lot. Um, I have associate photographers. So um, I'm just that type of person that like wants to be a part of everyone's big day and do everything. Um, but it's just, when you have two kiddos, like it's just too hard. It's, it's a lot to juggle. And I think a lot of times, uh, I, I know that this has been a, a pretty common sentiment in the industry. There is this feeling of a need to, to do everything and that there's mm -hmm. somehow that, that the photographer is somehow compromising their business or their efforts if they're not kind of taking it all on themselves. And we, we create, like you said, we, we are setting the wrong premise for ourselves, which just leads to burnout. You talked about that that uh, episode, it's actually episode 473, the key to negating burnout. I, I pulled it up yeah. on my phone with uh, Drew Renner and Chad Brown. Shout out to both Dude, of them. Dude, I loved it. Oh my God. Oh, the whole good. The whole podcast, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. That's so me. I, I literally told maybe like a dozen people about it. Oh, that's cool. Well, I, you've been very kind in sharing even about today's episode, and I appreciate you talking about the show. But ultimately, I think there's some significance to some of those thoughts that they were sharing there and helping minimize burnout will certainly link to the show, uh, the episode in the show notes at bocapodcast.com for everybody listening in or watching. But mm -hmm. um, to that end, you're talking about um, kind of adjusting mindset, shifting mindset, certainly outsourcing, delegating. And I kind of wanted to ask you about delegation as part of this kind of time management process. Is it, is it something that you've always done or is it something that became a choice that then was a learning curve that you had to kind of learn to work through it, learn how to communicate to somebody else what you want done. Tell us a little bit about the experience. Oh, I mean, Nathan, it's all about communication. Um, it's all about communicating what you need from your associates, um, from the clients, um, making everything streamlined. And yeah, communication is so important, so powerful. Um, but as you said, like, it was a learning process for sure. Like it was a lot of mindset yeah. things I had to overcome, like giving stuff away, um, you know, not doing everything myself because, mm. you know, a lot of photographers don't want to give their editing style away and they think they could do everything better. Um, but I think it's important to know, like you do have to get good at it first before you give it away. Um, I got really good at making reels and I thought I was so cool and so efficient and so fast, but you know, it was eating a lot of my, time and taking a lot of my mental space so i had to just outsource that and now it just feels so freeing so i give the you know the editor like kind of what i want and then she edits and you know i pay her so it's you know it's extra money but i feel like that space that headspace of mine it's so yeah. worth it absolutely this is something that, that i'm actively working on in, in my companies now as well learning how to manage my time more effectively and, and to collaborate with my team more effectively as well. Mm -hmm. It's so important because we can't do everything ourselves and to be able to work with someone or a group of people that are supporting you're, you're, you're in the same mental space working toward at least a somewhat similar goal. And, uh, there's opportunity of course, to, to give jobs or to create jobs uh, for people, which is really cool, but leveraging the, the collective, for the sake of the long-term goal, the overall goal, it's super important. You're thinking like a big picture business owner. I think a lot of photographers, and I've certainly been guilty of this as well, even in recent years in certain ways, 
we limit ourselves. We think mm -hmm. like sole proprietors. We think like small, small business owners, not like a business owner who wants to scale, to grow, to have a life while also running a business. And it mm -hmm. is a mindset shift. But you, you said at the center of that is communication. Have you always been a good communicator? Or was there a bit of a learning curve when it came to communication specifically? I'm a horrible communicator. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Okay. Yeah, just I've had to learn along the way. Um, and now, like, you know, I would go to meetings, like, super awkward and just want to cry after the meetings mm -hmm. because I just bombed it. Hmm. And, you know, I just kept doing it because something about me is I never give up with anything. If I put my mind to it, I don't give up. And hmm. I just kept doing it, doing it. Um, going at it, doing these calls, failing, failing, getting so many no's, so many no's, hmm. but I got better at it. And, you know, now after all these years, I'm literally just having a conversation. Like we're having a conversation, like I'm getting to know you and you're getting to know me. Um, I get to know my clients' weddings, their photography needs and, you know, what they're all about. And, you know, it just, it's just practice, um, being a good listener and, you develop those skills along the way. But if you give yeah. up, you know, maybe you'll never realize that you could be an excellent communicator. And mm. I just recently did IG TV live about my coaching program and I completely bombed it. Like oh, no. I was sweating, I was fumbling on my words. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I kept it live and I kept it up. Mm -hmm. I posted mm -hmm. to my feed because I just want to realize like I still need practice. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm still very humble and I always need to be growing and learning and perfecting my skills. That's so good. Okay, so a couple of things you, you've mentioned I just want to touch on real quick, um, and then we're going to get into our main topic here in just a bit. But you mentioned when it comes to, let's, let's, I'm going to go back to communication for just a second, and then I want to come back to your, your resilience when it comes to learning skill set, because I think that's so important too. Communication, you said it's important to, to have experience doing the thing yourself before you delegate it out. I think that is extremely key for effective communication. I think a lot of times photographers are trying to delegate something. They get frustrated with the experience, but what they don't realize, they don't think about is that they weren't super clear about what it is that they were looking for, number one, or mm -hmm. maybe they had a good idea of what they wanted, but they didn't know how to effectively communicate that to somebody else. We make sense to ourselves, right? But then trying to communicate that thing to somebody else, it's a different it's a different conversation, literally, because we, yeah. we define words differently. We infer certain emotions in the conversation. We have to, there's a lot of moving parts in that process. So we have to learn to communicate better. I'm just glad that you highlight the significance of being clear about knowing, understanding what it is that we want done first in order to then effectively delegate. I want to come back though, to what you were talking yeah. about, pushing through frustrations, pushing through so-called failure, you, you talked about your ability as a communicator. Do you consider yourself an introvert or extrovert? How do you categorize yourself that way? Or do you? I'm, I've taken many tests, so I'm 50, 50. Okay. I need, I need connection. I have a lot of friends, but I do need to be alone too. Hmm. You well, know, I, I need I to be blogging and just be by myself and just sure. kind of be like, don't talk to me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like with you, like I could never have a podcast because my mind would just probably explode. Oh, you think so? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, you're doing great now already. I mean, it, you talk about your ability as a communicator, but I, I just love the fact that you pushed through various instances where maybe it felt like you failed or, I mean, I can, I laughed when you were talking about sweating and fumbling around because I totally have those experiences still. And I'm over 500 episodes into this podcast, right? We've been doing yeah. it for five years and I was just, I think I was just telling somebody, I feel like I'm still like, we're just getting started. I'm always learning, but I yeah. think that's such a great mentality to have. It starts with humility, which you talked about earlier, super important that we always mm -hmm. maintain some sense of humility. We set aside that ego because what part of what that enables is the ability to push forward. If, they, if we think we've made it or then we're too good for something, it'll be a lot easier to, to fall off or give up or not continue to work to improve. I love that mm -hmm. you've got the right mentality in that regard. D is that natural for you? Or is that something that like your parents instilled in you? Where does that come from? I've talked to like some mediums and they're like, it's kind of just in me. Like I'm like those rice field Chinese workers. Like I need to survive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And you'll do whatever you can to, huh? Yeah. Like survival mode. Like sure. you just, you work hard. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later in our conversation, but 
I'm e- I easily could work hard. It's for me, it's hard to rest. So that is what I had to learn um, mm. through burnout. So mm. yeah, doing the work, doing the um, the heavy lifting, doing the leg work, doing the hustle actually comes very natural to me. Okay. Um, but learning to say no, um, no thank you, learning to rest, learning to take breaks, that's that's a little bit harder for me. Yeah, that makes sense. I, it, it's, I can relate in some ways. Um, and I know Jill, who produces the podcast, um, can very much relate as well. I, it, she just started working with us about three months or so ago. And her work ethic is just, it, it's inspiring. It pushes me. Um, she, like, when I, like, I have some, a lot of interactions with her on yeah. social media. And I'm yeah. like, oh, shit. <laughs> sorry. No can worries. you see me? Yeah. I, yep. There we go. We're back. We're I was good. like, yeah, I was like the only person that's faster than her is like me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, shout out to we Jill. were like DMing each, DMing each other like at six in the morning. So <laughs> yeah. that is that is Jill. Yeah. Though she kind of she kind of set the standard for all of us. So but I, anyway, I was just going to say that that work ethic, um, I can certainly understand where you're coming from. I have a lot of respect for it. Um, I also appreciate the fact that you realize a need for a bit more balance. I mean, it'd be one thing too, if you were single and, and all you had to do was take care of yourself and you got family, uh, in the, in the mix, that becomes a whole different conversation too. So it's, it's so important mm-hmm. that we learn to create that space for ourselves. I'm sure we could probably do a whole episode or two just on this topic, but I want to keep going. One other question yes. for you before we get to the main topic at hand, that the dreaded sales call and how to kind of overcome those apprehensions. Talk to me about a favorite book, maybe a couple of books if you want. Um, self-help book, business book that's made a really big impact in your life. I just kind of listened to the audiobook recently um, on the way to Palm Springs, but it's called Do Less by, um, what's her face? Katie Northup, I think. Okay, I'll pull it up while you're talking about it. What, what did you like about it? It's about like, you know, being an entrepreneur, being a mom, but... You know, we don't have to work hard 24 seven. Um, it's about kind of taking breaks and a lot of like time hacks. Um, and it kind of goes into like period cycle, not to be nasty, but oh, no, like no. when, yeah, <laughs> like with the moon and when we, um, like what phases of our cycle, like we should be networking or creating or resting. Um, yeah. So it really goes into that. And she has a lot of studies um, that prove, you know, her methods on um, how to be the most productive, but not use as much effort. Like we don't have to keep on hustling all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, And we really do need rest to um, hit our main goals. Yeah, I've actually got the book pulled up here. And a little bit of context for anybody listening. This is a, a book for women, in case you were curious. Um, but it's called Do Less, A Revolutionary Approach to Time and Energy Management for Ambitious Women by Kate Northup, or Northrup, you, you totally called that. And we'll make sure to link to this uh, in the show notes at bocopodcast.com. This is actually a new book um, recommendation. So that, that's kind of cool, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's I heard like her dad is famous, too. Okay. Um, but I literally listened to the whole thing like in one sitting and she even talks a lot about like even have a good how to have a good marriage and be a good mom um, and how to be a good friend. Um, and she really gets into like the nitty gritty. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head, um, no worries at but all. We'll, I'm sure it'll come to me. Yeah, yeah no, we'll, we'll link to it in the show notes. So anybody who's curious can check it out. Uh, by the way, for everybody listening, I haven't mentioned this in a little while. I, I talk about the show notes, but do take advantage of it. Uh, for those of you who are listening or watching, bocapodcast.com. If you click on the episode, you can go to that episode and the associated show notes. It's talking points, the resources from that episode. We link to it there. So uh, for those of you listening and watching, take advantage. Really great resource. All right. I want to keep going here. We're going to actually dig into our main topic for today. We've, we've touched on it a little bit, but that so-called dreaded sales call, and we could probably just kind of generally talk about sales. And I mean, I know for me, I even get a little apprehensive when it comes to sales, more because I'm, I'm worried, not, not about my ability to communicate as much as I hate to feel like I'm like forcing an idea on somebody else. Like I'm like mm-hmm. I'm pushing the situation. I'd rather it happen much more organically. It's funny. I've literally on this podcast or guests that have been this podcast or people that listen, they're like, 
you need to talk about photographers edit more. Like you, you barely talk about your own company. And I'm like, I know, I know, but I don't want to, I don't want to shove it down anybody's throat. Right. I don't want yeah. to be a, a big commercial all the time. Um, yeah. so I can understand photographers apprehensions. And, you know, honestly, when I shot weddings, Carissa, for about 10 years, we very intentionally actually had a, a business model where we didn't do in-person sales 99% of the time. So we'd shoot the wedding, we'd upload to a gallery. We worked with a, a system at that, at that point that automated our marketing for print sales and it worked out really well. And we charged enough of a premium as, as we matured as a business that we weren't as concerned about in-person sales. So I didn't do a lot of in-person sales outside of that initial consultation. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't get a lot of experience there either. But I know this is super important. A lot of people make a lot of money too doing IPS. A lot of photographers probably hold back from that because they're nervous about sales. But mm -hmm. even for new photographers, or for that matter, existing photographers who are getting ready to try to book the client, they're going to have that initial phone call, the initial Zoom meeting, maybe even set up a meeting now that things are opening back up at a coffee shop or something like that. They're nervous, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we mm -hmm. kind of dread that. So we're going to get into how you've been able to step beyond that and, and create the system, this process that's enabled you to convert more clients. Do you have a, like an extensive background on sales or is this something that you had to kind of learn on the go? I, I had a lot of jobs. So a lot of like restaurant jobs. I think that helped okay. me with a lot of small talk. Yep. Um, I worked as an Apple campus rep. No way. In UC Riverside. Okay. So I sold like Apple products. We had like an Apple store in the, the school um, or like an Apple section. Um, and so I had to kind of like go to sororities and fraternities and organizations and try to yep. just kind of, um, you know, say, say, Hey, like buy Apple products and stuff. So that was mm -hmm. a really good experience. And I wasn't very techie, so it helped me with that. And then I worked at the Apple store. Um, and I did some like multi-level marketing. Um, okay. so that helped me with, um, you know, kind of talking to people, kind of getting out of my fear of stuff. But yeah, it was, it's still like, even when I started my wedding photography business, still very scary. Well, especially I think about multi-level marketing, that to me is, is one of the most challenging sales fields. Cause you're a lot of times you're coming to people who have no expectation that you're going to talk to them about anything. And then you're, you're trying to kind of convince them on, on an idea that may not be familiar to them. I don't know. It just seems overwhelming because I've, I've heard of it before. I don't think I've ever been involved in one, but it just seems like a really challenging sales environment to be in. Yeah. I mean, they teach you like little scripts and stuff. I don't even remember, but, um, it's one of those things I did like in college and never stuck, but it kind of gave you that carrot, like, Oh, there's something bigger out there mm -hmm. for you. Um, mm -hmm. and you kind of have to work at it and it's through talking and connecting to people. So I think subconsciously maybe that helped me in the long run. Um, looking back, um, and now, yeah, I could talk to anyone just, and I actually do talk a lot in my car because I'm always on the go. So sure. and my clients, they, they don't mind it. Um, sometimes my kids are in the car and I'm like throwing them snacks and I'm on a sales call okay. and they don't care because I am just getting to know them and I'm concentrating on them and I'm understanding like their, their needs and their wants. Um, and I prove that through writing like this cohesive email, um, and yeah. Well, I, we'll probably come to some of the details of that, that process here in just a second. But um, I want to take a step back. We talk about this apprehension that photographers tend to have most. There's always the exception, of course. But I think many, if not most photographers, have this apprehension when it comes to the idea of sales. And I'm curious your perspective on this. Why do you think so many photographers are afraid of the notion of sales? And they hear that word sales and they kind of cringe internally or externally, maybe. Why do you think that is? I mean, it's just basically like not much experience. Um, you don't know your worth. Um, you're scared to ask for money. These are all very basic things. Um, you think you could, you know, shoot all day. You could do style shoots. You could pay for style shoots. You could second shoot. You could shoot weddings. Um, but when it comes down to asking for the sale, um, people just kind of freak out. And I think Sure. Something I just remember that I learned from being an Apple campus rep, but we went to the Apple headquarters and they said um, they taught us how to close a sale or ask for the sale. Um, so whatever happens, like at the end of my calls, I always ask for the sale. And if it's a no, then you could find out, you know, 
what their apprehension is or mm -hmm. what I didn't say that maybe some other photographer said and really like get in their head. So at the end of the call, I just say, you know, with a really happy face, like, do you want me to be your wedding photographer? <laughs> and then they say, you know, hopefully yes. And yeah. we pop the champagne or they say, um, we're still trying to decide. And I say, can you tell me a little bit like what's going in your head right now and try to get to the pain point and you know maybe you could throw in a little extra 20 by 30 canvas maybe you could throw in that extra hour just to kind of like be like okay yeah let's do it um sure just those little extra nudges are all the difference and you really just have to understand like there's a lot going on like in their heads like um this is the biggest day of their life like they're spending a lot of money um should they be looking talking to more photographers are they making the right decision so it's you know our job as photographers to hold their hand and to answer any questions right. um and just to really get to know them and understand them in like their whole wedding day mm -hmm. uh so many different directions we could go there i'm, I'm going to kind of bring it back around though because I'm, I'm curious for your i mean i know you have your experience as a salesperson in all these different environments do you like was there a turning point for your business specifically where you said you know what i'm I'm not just going to kind of do things randomly, but I'm going to be super intentional and come up with a process through which I go. Was there a turning point that, that led to that? Yeah. So I went through a really tough time in my career. I forget how many years ago, but it was when the dark and moody style became really popular. Yeah. Um, and my style is like pretty opposite, like more mm -hmm. like vibrant and colorful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe I wasn't just learning enough and I wasn't pushing myself. Maybe I got kind of stagnant and complacent in my business. And I think I did, Nathan, like eight calls in a row or not even calls and meetings where I had to clean my office, you know, talk to them for hours. Sometimes I went over, mm -hmm. show them my albums, get to know them, get them, you know, um, coffee, everything, do the whole like whole nine for them. And then what do they say? We're looking for another photographer uh, that's really the dreaded words right sure um and you could maybe even wait weeks or months to hear that and you're just waiting for it i mean this is how we live this is our paycheck um so yeah it was so it was hard one of my best friends said maybe you should just work for another photographer Ooh. um yeah that was kind of like ouch yeah. like like me you know <laughs> work for another photographer yeah um, so yeah, I really had to step up my game. I had to hire a sales coach, um, you know, do a lot of mindset work, um, kind of talk to a lot of brides. Like, what, what are they truly looking for? Like really ask myself some hard questions. Like what can I do to improve? Um, yeah, really see like my portfolio and, you know, ask myself like, how am I going to grow? How am I going to get out of this? Because like I said, I don't give up. Well, but I, again, I have a lot of respect for it. And, and like, I, I want to be your friend. You live in California. I'm in Tennessee. We, we don't get to actually like be near each other, but I want to hang out just because I, I have so much respect for people who have that mentality. And it's something that I try to do in my own life, which is we, we really can't be good. We, we were talking about Jill earlier. Jill and I also are in a, in a relationship. We, we've been together for a while. Um, no! but yeah, 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 yeah. Ah! See, tell me everything. Tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not a secret, to be clear. Um, okay. It, it, it's out there for sure. But uh, anyway, the reason I bring that up is because we, we were just... I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See, you bring that energy to a sales call and people are going to book you right away. That's awesome. Yeah, like that's what I want to talk about. You guys, you and Jill. <laughs> Switching gears right now. <laughs> uh, I, wish, I wish we could conference her in. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I know. What, what the reason I bring that up, though, is because she and I were having a conversation the other day about this, this idea of self-improvement and... I've hit a space personally where I'm, I'm not, I'm no longer trying to do everything well. First of all, acknowledging the fact that I can't do everything well. I mean, it, not that that was even that complicated, but I'm very much like you. I'm like, oh, but if I only work at it, I'll get better and I can be good at the thing. And I was taking on way too much. And I had this long list of things that I was taking on and it was just, it was too crowded. And the, re the reality was I couldn't give enough attention and energy to each of those things to actually truly become good. And so I've, I've had to pull back and then also learn to be okay with that and not at the same time kind of like juggle that feeling of kind of like I gave up, you know, because I had to say, okay, enough is enough. I have 
eight things yeah. on my plate. I need to be focusing on four, for example. Um, so anyway, that's just kind of the space that I'm in. But all that to say, there is, there is this mentality that you're describing, which is never give up, always look for opportunity to improve, which is very much at the heart of, um, shall we say, who I am. And, and I think that is something that can help all of us go a long, long way if we're willing to take that on, if we're willing to be uncomfortable and to push past whatever the uncomfort is and to actually, like you've described over and over again now, take a step back, take a deeper look, the moving, the base moving parts and see mm -hmm. what needs to be changed and how to better approach the situation so that we can do whatever that thing is more effectively. And you've done this with your sales. Um, we're going to talk about a few specific steps for the sake of our listeners so they can implement this in their business in a second. But I'm curious, you, you made this, you, you had the realization and kind of that harsh turning point of a number of failed sales calls and your friend suggesting you go work for somebody else. You make the change and now you're at a space where you're super comfortable with the process of sales. What is the conversion rate like? Like if you jump on the phone with a client or potential client and, or you get to meet with them over zoom or whatever it might be, what is that conversion rate at this point? I've been crushing it not to be conceited, but <laughs> it's been like crazy, yeah. like a hundred. Really? So just pretty much, I mean, seriously, if you bring that same energy that you just threw out there a second ago, when I mentioned Jill, I, I, I would book you. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, and it's, it's super genuine. Like yeah. I really want to hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> I totally love that. But see, but here's the thing in all seriousness, I'm getting I bored of myself. Like I just want to hear about you. <laughs> no, but, but it's, it's, this is beautiful example because we've talked about the significance of, um, of energy or bringing energy to an interaction the, the, the way that you just did that. I mean, it, I couldn't help but smile, right? It makes me feel good. That's yeah. the kind of energy that we all as, as photography business owners need to be bringing to our interactions with our clients or potential clients. And it just makes a drastic difference. All the difference in the world, people will feel that and it's not the norm. So they're going to, it's going to make a massive impact and mm -hmm. uh, the conversion rate becomes higher. And, and Andres, who's listening in, he said, my trick is to think of sales. And I'll pop this up on screen. Mm. Uh, he says, my, my trick is to think of sales call as customer service. You're just helping the client understand their needs. That's kind of interesting. I, I want to get your take on that, that idea uh, before we, we talk about your specific recommendations, Carissa. What do you think about that? Is it, is it about helping the client understand their needs or just looking to understand their needs for the sake of meeting those needs? What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's all the, I think the client is number one for sure, just listening to them. And you could throw in some things about you, like how you stand out, but it's all about them. Like they don't really care about your awards. You know, they reach out to you for a reason. So they already like your work or love your work. Um, so now it's just really getting to know them. Um, so yeah, just, I think the first one would be like my point for the sales call. I'm taking notes. Is, Here we go. Well, okay, step it back a little bit, but okay. I actually don't send my PDF prices out. Okay. So it helps me like get on the phone with them right away. Um, so, I think so you, you can send p PDF prices out, but it's just not my thing. I like to actually like talk about my packages. Okay. So but we're it, just for everybody listening in for context sake, we're kind of setting the stage here for a less overwhelming, um, a less frustrating, a less... Um, fear causing sales process. And the first thing you're talking about is not necessarily sending out a price sheet, a PDF or otherwise. And you're doing that for the sake of creating a little bit of curiosity demand. So it kind of not forces them, but encourages them to get on a call with you. Yeah. So I text them and I just say, Oh, are you free for 10 minutes? This is just an introductory call. So simple. Like it's literally like three sentences and just, you know, Carissa with photography with a little emoji of a camera. And then I usually get them on a call that day or even that second because okay. it's only 10 minutes. So it's nothing scary. And it doesn't have to be both parties. It's usually just the bride or just the groom. Um, so pretty much I get them on a the phone. Um, my coaching program is a little different um, because I've been doing this so long. It's a little, mine's only 10 minutes, my call, but um if you're just getting started, I would do the whole like Zoom call, the whole 30 minute call. That's what my whole program's about. Okay. Um, I'll tell you guys more about later. But I guess the first thing yeah, is getting them on that phone call and then asking them. The first point would be like asking them really like powerful questions. Like you kind of already know the love story from the inquiry form, but just creating that really good rapport. So 
I actually don't even talk about the wedding at first. Um, I just pretty much say like, how's your day going? Or, you know, like, what are you doing right now? Like, thanks for getting the call with me. Just creating like a little bit of rapport before you like get down to all the details. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm a person, you're a person. Like, I could be nervous, you could be nervous. Like, let's just, you know, get that out of the way. Like, like, hey, like, like, how are you? How's wedding Mm. planning going? Like, you know, just a little bit more easier questions. Not like, how many people do you have on your guests coming? Like, what's your venue? You know, sure. stuff like that. So kind of ease into the conversation. Um, yeah, so that would be like my first point. Okay, so um, and, and by the way, for anybody listening in who might be like, well, of course you would get on the phone and have basic conversation. I, I think this is actually poignant because there is something to be said for, for creating that human connection. And the human connection, part of what comes from human connection is the, the sense that we can relate to that person, right? So, yeah. so much formality and getting right to business kills that potential for genuine human personal connection. So the yeah. notion of small talk to, to start things off, I think yeah. it's, it's, it's really important. So I'm, I'm taking notes here, by the way. So I, I, the first thing I wrote down was to ask powerful question. So you're starting off really with, with just kind of some small talk to help them feel comfortable, but then you're asking powerful questions and you, and you said you do that for the sake of rapport. Now I'm projecting on this situation, but when I think about asking powerful questions for the sake of rapport, I do this intentionally in conversation with other people, not in the sales context. And one of the ways that to me, it feels like it creates rapport is I care enough to ask a deeper question. People aren't used to that type of interaction. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about when you're talking about rapport or what does that mean to you? I think initially when you get on the phone, like I'm actually trying to get comfortable too in the conversation and I want them to get comfortable too. Um, so just creating that, that vibe, like I even tell them like where I am. I'm just like, Oh, I just picked up my kids or, you know, I'm, I'm been editing all day. This is going on. Um, and then I kind of ask them like, Hey, do you mind if I ask you some photography related questions? Um, And do you mind if I tell you a couple of them? Please go for it. Yeah. Okay. So I say, this is an important question for you, but what are you looking for in a wedding photographer? So they can say different things, but you know, the generic answer is, is something we don't feel comfortable in front of the camera Mm. and we want a good direction. Mm -hmm. Um, But some people have like really interesting answers. Like we just want to party or, um, you know, our families never met and we want, all the candidates of the families are, we're crazy dancers or we're ravers or, you know, we're, um, we're snowboarders. So just interesting answers. Sure. So you kind of like revolve your, an- their answer, um, the call revolves around their answer. And then another question I say is tell me like your vision of the wedding aesthetically and the overall, overall vibe. So these questions are pretty broad, but very specific in a way too. So, they can say, um, yeah, we just, the vibe of our wedding is going to be like more about the family. Like we want good conversation with people like, um, and aesthetically it's very romantic with like pops of color or they can say, oh, we just want one big party. Like we, we love to dance. We're going to have a mariachi band We're we're going to have a jazz band there. Or, um, we've been together since high school and we just want to get married. Like, and we want someone to capture that. So um, just letting them talk and, you know, talk their feelings out because maybe they ha- don't even know their vision. So it's nice for them to talk it out. Sure. Yeah, it's funny how talking out loud, like processing out loud can help create clarity for everybody involved at times. So I, I kind of, I, I, again, taking notes here on, on, on paper, but I wrote down as a first step, create rapport with small talk. So just kind of creating a certain level of comfort in the interaction. A, a human connection again, if you will. And then I wrote down, create rapport with photography related questions or photo questions. Mm-hmm. And so now you're starting, we started with a small talk. So now there's a, a personal connection and then you build on that and get into some of the photo related questions. Um, okay. So those are kind of a first step, maybe a A and B, if you will, um, for the first step, what's kind of the next step in the sales process that's really helped you? Yeah. If you get them on a the zoom call, which I do recommend, um, you could talk like me and you, you could really, you know, see their body language, but I actually show them like, a, or I used to, I show them an album and 
one of my favorite like weddings. So get your favorite wedding. And I put this on Canva and I just share my screen okay. and I walk them through a whole album. I kind of do like a whole storytelling, mm. um, but through the storytelling of the couple in the album, I actually ask a lot of questions about their wedding. So they kind of see themselves in this wedding timeline, the day. So are they doing first look? Like, where are they getting ready? Um, tell me about your family. Tell me about your ceremony. Um, you know, are you going to do crazy dancing? Are you going to do all the ceremonial, ceremonial stuff like first dance and cake cutting, garter toss, bouquet toss, all that jazz, um, any choreographed dances, any special performances. Um, and yeah, it's very powerful. They see your work and I'm just going to kind of get into it. So, and then at the end of the album viewing, I just say like, what do you love most about my work? Or like, what were you drawn to most? Um, it's a very powerful question. They're kind of, you know, selling themselves for you. Yeah, that's really <laughs> so, interesting. So, yeah, they'll say like, oh, like, you know, I love all your candids and, you know, I love your night shots and you really tell a story. And I say, yeah, like you could have all that for your wedding because, you know, the only thing you get back from your wedding is your album and your photos. You can't take away anything else. So, you know, this is an investment for you. That's I, that's really powerful. Okay, so again, I'm just writing steps down here, and this is helpful for our listeners too to have specific actionable steps. So, create a rapport with small talk, and then build on that rapport with photography related questions, uh, and then you're beginning to develop an understanding of their wedding day, while also sharing your work, which is kind of an interesting. I, I love that you're building, kind of combining those two things, rather than just simply sitting there with a notebook or a laptop or your phone or whatever and taking notes and just asking them questions. You're doing it as you're showing work. And I, I, I love that approach. I don't think I've heard anybody really talk about it that way before. Uh, that's really cool. And, and then you're talking about, oh, are you still there? I think we lost you. Uh-oh. We'll come back to uh, Krista in just a second. She froze on us. For everybody watching, listening live, uh, forgive us for just a second. I think what we'll do here is see if we can get Krista to just call us back. Here she is. She's joining, joining. One second here. Oh. Is she there? Hello, Krista. All right. We, we don't have her yet, so we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can try it again. Um, meanwhile, oh, she's calling again. One second. Did we get her this time? Maybe? Sort of? Kind of? Oh, no. Okay, well, while, while she's trying to call back in, just to review the points one more time, create a rapport with small talk. Build on that rapport with photo questions. Number three was develop an understanding of the wedding day through sharing your work. Really interesting. She's calling in again. Are you there, Krissa? Okay, you're still, hey, Chrissy, you're still muted. Any chance that you accidentally muted yourself? Yeah, hold on. Oh, there you are. Can you see me? Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. My mom calls me all the time. I think, yeah, can, can you, you hear, hear us okay? Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Okay, good. My mom called me. Okay, cool. Um, I, give me, if, if you don't mind popping those earbuds back in, we could hear you a little bit more clearly with the earbuds, the, the speaker on the, or the mic on the earbuds. That'll be really okay. cool. I was actually in the process of, of uh, just kind of talking back through these points. So while you're doing that, for everybody listening in, um, number three was developing understanding of the, the wedding day, the client's wedding day via the album viewing, which I think is just a brilliant concept to combine the two, to, do, to both be able to share your work while also having conversation about the client's wedding day, better understanding through the context of your images, what that looks like. I think that's brilliant. And then number four is asking them, what do you like about my work? And I, I, I kind of want to dig into this just a little bit, uh, Chris, let me come back to you here. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh Oh, I think we lost yeah. her again. Testing, testing. 
Well, we lost her again. But I, I'm, if we can, um, if we have the opportunity here before we finish up, I want to ask Chris about this, this idea of presenting the client with the question, do you like, what do you like about my work? I think it's kind of fascinating, actually, to set them up to think positively about your brand. And you, you do put the ball in, your, in their court, as Chris was pointing out. What do you like about my work? So now they've got to actually express that and they're feeling it and they're thinking it. They're saying it out loud and it almost, it's almost like it solidifies the likely positive experience that they're already having looking at this work, talking to Carissa and your incredible, like vibrant personality. I, again, I just love how she came alive um, just a second ago when we were talking about Jill, but that sets sales interaction up for success even further because we're solidifying the notion that this is a positive interaction. All right, Chris is calling in. Let's see if we got it this time. Oh, can Carissa, can you hear us? Let's see. Let's jump over here. I'm here. I'm here. Cool. Can you hear Sorry. me okay? Yeah, I can't do the earbuds. Sorry. But can we just do it like this? We'll we'll give it a shot. Yeah, it's super it's super quiet, but we'll we'll give it a shot. So I was actually just okay. I was commenting on the um that last point that you made about asking the question, what do you, or to the client, what do you like about my work? And, and what I was saying, just kind of processing, thinking out loud here, I was saying that it's, it's a cool question and it sets, it kind of further solidifies the likely already positive experience the client is having by kind of almost forcing them to verbalize it, right? Now they're having to actually yes. say out loud what they like about you. And is that something, is that a technique you came up with your own or that you learned somewhere else? Yeah, I think I can't really take credit for it. I wish I could. Um, but I learned it from this guy, Jordan Caressis. Yes. Um, I know yeah, I know Jordan. So, Jordan's uh, actually here in the Chattanooga area where I live. Yeah, so he's really, really, really good teacher. Hmm. I got to give him like a really good shout out. Yeah, he's pretty legit. And I learned that. I mean, I've done so much work for myself, but I think that one particular question is from him. Very cool. Yeah, I was actually, as you were talking, I, I was trying to pull up uh, the episode that we did with Jordan. Let me see if I can do this really quick for everybody listening in, because we actually had Jordan on the show uh, quite some, it's been a little while back, actually. Uh, episode, uh, maybe not too long ago, episode 428 yeah. um, was... Uh, the last episode we did with him, we did a, a our first episode with him back in episode 214, quite a while back. Um, so 214 was how to create a wedding lead machine. And then 428, your identity is a myth, which by the way, is probably one of my favorite episodes uh, that I've done on the podcast. Jordan's, his, his mentality and his approach to life is, and business is super powerful. So I will link to those in the show notes for everybody who's listening at bocapodcast.com. You can check out those episodes. Uh, I'm glad. Yeah, that... I'll, I'll take credit for the, all the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. It's great to give a shout out to those who we learn from. Andres was saying, at what point in the call do you ask, what do you like about my work? This is kind of at the very end of the interaction, right? Yeah. So after the album viewing, um, and then do you mind if I get to my next point? Please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So then my next point is, you know, I tell them about my packages. Um, and you could do anything for eight hours. You could explain it, um, but you have to tell them like all the deliverables they're going to get. Um, and you could tell them the price and it really doesn't matter how much you charge. Like you, we could go into that later. That's a whole different topic, but you really have to sell yourself in this part and tell them, you know, there's 700 retouch photos. Um, they're all high res. I don't hold them for hostage. You get them on a stunning online gallery and I give you a USB. Um, these photos are going to last you a lifetime. And then people, you know, that's kind of talking about money. So the energy goes down a little bit. So then my next point is the fun part and it's a rapid fire questions. And I tell them, hey, do you mind if I ask you some rapid fire questions? It doesn't matter who answers. Like just be like super fun about okay. it. Um, it's pretty fast and they're like yeah sure and it just really brings the energy up like boom way up um and i start saying like okay so who said i love you first and they're like i don't know and who kissed who first you know what was your first date what's your favorite vacation 
So I only do maybe like two or three questions, but really fun, really powerful. You know, if you're a superhero, who would you be? Um, what's your, and then, you know, I ask like kind of three or two or three fun questions. And they say, do you, um, say, yeah, this is kind of a deep question, but I'm really connecting with you guys, but, um, you guys could both answer, but what do you love most about each other? And I'll be like, Nathan, you can go first. And this is where it gets good. And I think I learned this from the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're like in this paint class and the artist asked that to Scott or something. And I was like, that is a very powerful question. And I just started using it and it worked. Oh my Lordy. Like people are in tears. They never heard these powerful words from their significant other ever. Um, I'm in tears. It's just, it's so moving. I'm really breaking down walls. And at this point, like price is not even an issue. So I, I, I want to kind of go back just a little bit there because you were talking about the presentation of the packages, but then if you're, you transition, you see, you said talking about money, of course, brings the energy down just a little bit um, in the interaction, but then you go to the rapid fire questions to kind of bring the energy back up. So then how do you get back to the money part? Like, how do you make that transition back and forth smoothly? Because it seems, it almost feels like it's out of place to go to these random rapid fire questions. It's cool because of course, like you're talking about the emotional connection and ability to share and connect with, with each other, the couple can, and, and of course with you, but then how do you bring that how do you go from that point then back to the conversion for sale? I mean, after I talk about the past packages, I ask them if they understand, if they have any questions, I'll tell them what the turnaround time and we're going to get sneak peeks back. Everyone's super excited. They can post on Instagram and Facebook and, you know, everyone's just super, super um, impressed how you know fast the turnaround is. And then, you know, bring it back to the rapid fire questions and it's super fun and then go back to um, the packages. And I think my last, my fourth point was the bonuses, the fun part. So it gets kind of, you know, packages and fun and then it gets even more fun. That's kind of like the climax. <laughs> What's, and when you say bonuses, are you talking about like add-ons that you build into the packages or what do you mean by that? Yeah, you could do anything. So you could say like, if you book on the call, then you get, you know, $500 off or a free engagement session or, 20 by 30 canvas and I bring the easel or you get an extra hour or you could add a second shooter um so people love bonuses um people love incentives and if you book in I'm going to send you the proposal if you book in 24 hours then you get like a free sign-in book worth 600 dollars and it features 65 of your favorite engagement photos um, and people at your wedding just love that so yeah, like it really ends on like a very big thing. And then um, that was like kind of my fourth point. And then, like I said in the beginning, I always close with um, asking with the sale. So I say, do you have any questions? Um, and I just say a little bit about me, like I've been doing this for over a decade. Um, I had an economics degree at UC Riverside, but photography is so much more fun. <laughs> I worked in advertising for a Toyota after college, but you know, the recession happened. I just kind of got out of it and hit the ground running for 50 weddings my first year. Um, wow. I, that sounds like a podcast you know, I, episode in and of itself, 50 weddings in your first year. Yes, I did. And that's not a joke. Wow. Don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> I shot over 300 weddings and, you know, I have over um, 300 raving reviews on the knot and I take really good care of my clients, really good care of my clients. And I'm just on it and I do everything very effortlessly. And I'm very efficient with my time. Like I don't waste your time. I don't waste my time. You know, your wedding day is a wedding. It's not photo day. Um, so I want you to spend as much time with your loved ones, especially now since we haven't seen our loved ones through the whole pandemic, you know, our cousins, aunties. So everyone's just so excited to see each other. They want the maximum time to spend with them. Um, so I want to give that to them. Um, and yeah, so then I, I just leave the call just you know, answering all their questions and saying, do you want me to be your wedding photographer? And we're so excited by this point. Like, they're just like, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. And again, if you're, if you are creating the energy that, that we got to see earlier and, and then you're taking them through this process and they can tell that you're invested. Um, 
I, it's not surprising that you're, I mean, that they're ultimately going to book with you, that you're converting so highly. You, you said four points earlier, but I, I've, th- I've written down like eight. So just for the sake of the listeners, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run back through these really quick. And I appreciate you sharing all these. Uh, we started with creating a rapport with small talk, just the human connection element that we talked about. Number two was to, yeah. Oh, you're, you're counting. Okay. I was like, what, what? <laughs> um, number two was to, to build on that rapport with photography related questions. Number three was to develop an understanding of the wedding day via the album viewing. Number four is to ask them the question, what do you like about my work? Which again, I, I love that. I don't, I don't think mm-hmm. I ever did that. I think it's a great way to go about it. And then number five, <laughs> uh, presentation of the packages. So we're talking about money now. We have to at least bring that up at some point, right? You follow that up to kind of lighten the mood number, with number six, which is to ask the rapid fire questions. Number seven, the bonuses to bring it back around to sales, but get them excited. Like you said, and people like incentives. And then number eight is to ask for the sale. Um, and you've warmed them up enough at this point. It, it's it's kind of like a no no brainer. That's really cool. Do you anything else you want to add to that as we're as we're kind of finishing up the conversation? Yeah, and I do this all very fast, so it sounds like a lot. And I do get to know them very well and their wedding. But because of how powerful and energetic I am in the call, like these Zoom calls are no longer than like twenty five minutes. Um, I've gotten it down to. 10 minutes now, um, but I don't lag it on because people got things to do. I have things to do. Um, we want to know, like, am I the right fit for them in the least amount of time possible? That's interesting to note too. Yeah, you're right. Because as, as much time as we've, as we've spent talking about this, I can imagine that a lot of people these days would think their attention span, like they they only want to give so much time. Like you said, they've got things to do. They're thinking about 50 other things simultaneously. So spending too much time dragging that out may begin to feel a little bit boring, a little slow. So you're moving through all this within 20, 25 minutes. That's actually really impressive. And I think that's important for all of us to note too. Don't take too much time. It's good to make the personal connection, but you can do that if it's intentional relatively quickly and then get, get to the point. Um, I, that's, that's a good note to end on. I I know that, that we've kind of, in some ways only scratched the surface though. There's, there are a lot of details, moving parts in all of this. You mentioned the coaching program that you offered earlier. And for those of you who didn't start the call with us today, I'm going to pop this up on screen, but Carissa Wu on Instagram, biz coach for wedding photographers, Carissa explains it all. (laughs) And you say DM me three month program to nonstop booking, get on vendor lists and master the sales call. Talk just a little bit about the program. Give a little bit of context to our listeners who might want to learn more. Yeah, um, you could DM me on Instagram. I'm always on Instagram. I'll DM you right back um, to set up a little strategy call. Um, but my program helps you, you know, before you master the sales call, you have to get inquiries. So, yeah, you know, I help you get the vendor list. That's a whole nother podcast. Um, and I help you make reels to get the constant inquiries. And yeah, I just help you make a marketing plan. So you could get inquiries like nonstop. I'm talking about like three to five a week. So, um, and with my, you know, sales methods, you are going to be closing these, these calls. You won't be closing every single one. Um, it's going to take some practice, but you once you start getting the hang of things, it's going to become easier, easier. You're going to get more motivated. You're going to get stronger. You're yeah. going to get more confident in yourself um, mm-hmm. and even in your work. Um, and yeah, it's a lot about, you know, just executing the wedding and the whole client experience. So it could sound like overwhelming weddings, but it's actually really fun. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think for the sales process to be effective, we have to genuinely enjoy it. I, I would assume so anyway, um, or it, it's going to, we're going to come off robotic and flat. And like, again, that kind of energy that you were showing earlier, that's not going to happen if, if we don't enjoy what we're doing. So again, a good reminder yeah. here to, to kind of close this off, but where can our listeners learn more about the coaching program? Can they just go directly to your site or just link from your Instagram account? Yeah. So I actually have a e-course, um, and an e-book. It's uh, linked in my link tree on my Instagram. Um, okay. It, um, it's only $37, but all the profits go to AAPI. 
um, Very Asian cool. American Pacific Islanders. So, Very cool. um, and then you could book a call there or you could DM me and get on a free strategy call and I'll give you really, really good golden nuggets. Um, very valuable to get on a call with me. It's all free. And I'll explain my three months coaching program um, in the most easy way possible, but most powerful way. So I guess, you know, talking to you, that's what I'm all about. Like very powerful calls, powerful engagement, um, um, very efficient with my time and, you know, get them these hot leads like fast and get them booking like fast. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, we're going to, we're going to link to all this in the show notes, um, at bocapodcast.com. You all saw the page I had pulled up there. Um, her Instagram or Chris's Instagram is just one more time, uh, is Carissa Wu. And then the photography Instagram account, Carissa Wu photography. And then of course, Chris's website, Carissa Wu photography dot com and again we'll put all those in the show notes at bocapodcast.com carissa thank you for making time for all of us for working through all the technical issues making this conversation happen today the way that you do really really appreciate it thanks for sharing with our community yeah and hit me up when you and jill get you know proposed <laughs> <laughs> perfect we, we already we already have somebody to go to awesome thank you so much everybody have a wonderful day make sure that you check out the, the show notes bocapodcast.com and take advantage of that as a resource make sure that you go follow carissa online on instagram carissa Wu and carissa Wu photography as well thanks so much thanks carissa thank you